welcome, welcome back to another YouTube video. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe, uh, subscribe button to stay inspired to rise up and rise up above these narcissists. So if you clicked on this video, you are tuning in to part two of me breaking no contact with my ex-narcissist. Part two is I want to share with you guys how did I feel a couple days after when I start, when I broke no contact with my narcissist. People don't realize at the end of the day, there's a chemical reaction that goes off inside of your brain that scientists have proven that um, dealing with a narcissist and that trauma bond and um, that codependency gives off a chemical reaction just as a drug addiction, just as a heroin addiction. So it's like you're constantly feeling, if you experience this, you will understand you're constantly feeling that high, but then you're also constantly feeling that low and you're constantly chasing after to feel that next high. So that's exactly how I felt a couple of days after talking to my narcissist as I felt super, super high on top of the world because he was telling me all the right things. He was love bombing me. He was literally calling me every day, texting me every lunch break, constantly talking to me in my ear and in my mind. And that's what they do to control you, right? It's to constantly be relevant inside of your mind and your emotions and then drop you when they don't need you anymore, right? So a couple of days down the line, I started to really feel it because this person was going so hard on being relevant inside of my life. So it started to, started to feel normal again, but it wasn't normal because he is in a full on relationship with somebody else, but yet he was wanting to live a double life with me and was literally treating me as if we are in a relationship. And I started to realize what the is going on, right? I started to see, right? And come down to my senses what this person was trying to do, right? And I started to say to myself, this doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right. Because at the end of the day, it's like this person wants their cake and eat it too and use me. I started to feel devalued. I started to feel like shit. I started to be constantly in my head thinking about him being with his new supply and then him wanting to use me and how he's treating her better and how he's doing this for her and I'm over here and he just wants to use me whenever he feels like it and then I started to feel like you know I'm nothing I'm not worthy of love and I wish I had love I wish I had him in my life and then I started to think to myself do I really want somebody who's gonna cheat on me and lie to me would I want to be that other girl behind closed doors living with somebody who's living a double life? You know, and I started to say to myself, what am I doing? She deserves better. I deserve better. Why am I allowing this? But it's like that addiction where you constantly just want to be loved. You constantly just want to be seen. You constantly just want this person to care for you. Just like how they cared for you at the beginning of the relationship. And they, they show you all that, but... Their action speaks different. They talk the talk, but their actions speak different. So my ex was talking all these amazing things and manipulating you, right? That's what they do. They Remember what I said in my first video, they will find your weakness, they will prey on it, and they will do everything possible to, you know, be this knight in shining armor to that weakness. And then you will get manipulated and you would start going back into that mindset that you need them to feel happy you need them to feel good right so it was constant battle i started to see a couple days down the line i started to feel really high when i was talking to them though i would feel like shit and all these thoughts would come in my head you know of me putting myself down when i'm not talking to him right and it was driving me crazy to the point that some days i didn't i feel like i didn't want to be here no more i was going i was back to feeling anxiety i was back to feeling depression I was back to feeling like shit, but then as soon as he messaged me, I was like, ah, yes, he's messaging me, he wants to talk to me, he cares about me, and I'm feeling all these amazing feelings all over again. And it's a broken cycle that happens when you break no contact. This is why it's so important to stay no contact, but trust me, I get it. When they, sometimes in your weakest moment, y'all, the enemy will come in and work through other people to distract you because my life was going so amazing y'all and this is why I want you guys to understand too like when 
everything is energy. So when you start leveling up mentally and emotionally and your energy is detaching from the narcissist, they will feel that energy. And that's when they would try the hardest to swoop back in. And the enemy will work through, you know, the narcissist to come and distract you because God is trying to take you higher and God's taking you to, you know, bigger and better things. And then after that, boom, don't you notice that's when you're doing good in life. That's when your ex, even if it's not a narcissist, always tries to circle back around in or all that. You know what I mean? Like, because it's energy. So I started to level up and my ex narcissist felt that. And then he swooped in and is trying to be relevant in my mind to control my mind and to control my emotions. And how do they do that? Praying on your weaknesses and praying on love bombing you to showing you all the attention, all the affection that you are not getting in the moment that you're not with them anymore, right? Even if they have somebody new. Because my ex, he's living with somebody and he's trying so hard to live a double life with me. Really and truly, that should show you that they really don't care about your emotions. Because if they cared, then they would not be messing with your mind and your emotions. But they, all they care about is they look at you again as an object and they just, them getting their supply, right? So how, how I dealt with those thoughts after is I turned to God. I turned to God and I said, I repent of my sins. Please help me to stand in the facts of knowing who this person is, what they're doing to me. And I started to, you know, remind myself that these thoughts and these feelings are not who I am. I'm a child of the most high God, that God loves me, that I am love. I'm worthy of love, that this person is, you know, j just an, a, kind of like an addiction, right? That keeps going off inside of my mind, wanting that high, but they're not my reality no more. They're my past. And that's the thing is that when somebody walks out of your life, they're your past. They're no longer your present. They're no longer, you know, going to be your future. God takes people out of side of your life for a reason. And it's only up to you to stand in the facts, to understand who they are, to move on and move forward and know who these people are. Because somebody will come inside of your life and keep abusing you and keep using you if you keep allowing it. And that's what I had to say to myself. At the end of the day, this is not love. This is not somebody who... I want inside of my life to use me and abuse me because that's what they're doing to the other person, right? And is that who I want to be? And I had to say to myself, and these are the, see, it's like changing your thoughts into positive thoughts instead of constantly focusing on the negative because we got to understand that just as much as the, the narcissist wants their ego to be stroked, let's admit it, we want our egos to be stroked too because we want to be seen. We want to be loved on. We want to be cared for, Right? And we're not thinking about anybody else in that moment. I'm not thinking about his, his, his new supply. I'm not thinking about him. I'm thinking about me. I'm thinking about how I want to be seen. I want to be loved. I want to be cared for. I want him to see me. So do you see what I'm trying to say that allows you to look at your traumas that need to be healed as well, right? To work on those. And that's what it allowed me to do when I came up with all these thoughts was to, you know, now look at these thoughts to say were areas inside of my my mind and in my heart that needs healing that needs loving on so breaking no contact is not always a bad thing you, you guys because again life doesn't happen to you life happens for you there's valuable lessons to learn on everything that you experience right so in part number four i'm going to share with you guys how was i able to gain back my power how was i able to gain back my strength to come back to my senses and go back no contact from my ex-narcissist. So stay tuned, right, for part three. I'll see you guys in part three. Thank you so much for tuning in the video. If you enjoyed this video and you learned anything or you like my story, please give me a thumbs up and I'll see you guys again on another video.